Hello, everybody. I'm Bob Tronjo, and you're in the reading room. And uh, so glad to have you with us uh, to study God's Word. We're reading out of Jonathan Mitchell's New Testament, his Greek rendering. And uh, such a wonderful time uh, it has been uh, being with you with this study. And uh, looking forward to us going on to the next book after tonight. I'm trusting that we'll be able to finish this uh, book out, the book of Hebrews. And uh, then I uh, want to go to the book of Ephesians for our next uh, uh, series. So we'll uh, be looking forward to doing that with you. And uh, so glad that you're taking it seriously and that you're wanting to know more about God. Uh, let's go ahead and ask God for his uh, blessings upon this uh, session tonight. Father, I thank you for all blessings that come from the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that you have poured out for us blessings that we cannot contain. That, oh God, we are able to uh, live in your benefits, oh God, that we are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, our Lord. That, Father, all of your promises are yea and amen. And we thank you, Lord, that you have tomorrow all taken care of for us. We thank you, Lord, that all we have to do is live this day out and know that, God, everything is going to be working toward our good. How good it is, Lord, to have that kind of peace and that kind of assurance especially in times like these. I thank you, Lord, that we can put all of our trust in you. So, Lord, tonight we're asking you to bless us with your anointing, with the spirit of life, O oh God, that is found in this Holy Script. Ask you, Lord, that it will burn into our hearts and that we would be able to live it out, walk it out every day of our life, Lord. And we thank you, Jesus, and we love you. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Don't you just love the Lord? Uh, so good uh, to us. Where would we be if we had not come to the Lord? Uh, I mean, what kind of a life would we be living? Have you ever thought about that? What would you be doing? What kind of a life would you have had if uh, the Lord had not ordained for you to know him in the way that we've known him. So, uh, and nothing of our good came from it. It wasn't that the fact that we were more intelligent than anyone else or that we were more spiritual than anyone else. Uh, God uh, drew us to him by his spirit. And uh, that's, that's, there's nothing of, of self-glory to that. It is simply the fact that that God has called us into this day. But then, you know, we have to ask ourselves, why? Why did God call us the way that he did? And it is to be able to portray to creation, especially mankind, the goodness of the Lord, his salvation and his righteousness, the joy in serving him. So uh, that is the reason why we have been given such a revelation of the kingdom of God is to put it on open display in this world. Uh, and I was thinking this morning about uh, what I get out of the, uh, the Greek New Testament, Jonathan Mitchell's Greek New Testament, is that it's teaching us how to be sons of God. Uh, for a lot of people, sons of God is just a title. Uh, they call themselves sons of God because they see it in the scriptures about sons of God and they've come to believe that they are one of those and so it goes no further than just saying, I'm a son of God. But what I've gathered from Paul's writings and we've done Romans, and now we're doing Hebrews, and then we're going to do Ephesians. Um, what I see in that is that Paul is instructing us uh, how to be sons of God uh, 24 hours a day. 
uh, not just as a biblical belief, but simply because we come to know, you know, uh, I am a son of God. Uh, I am a, 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 of the household of faith. And son of, son, a, a son of God is not someone that's elected to be by men to be a son of God. And you're not a son of God because you're a Christian. Uh, you were born to be a son of God in, in the Father. Uh, and, uh, and I find that Paul is teaching us how to be empowered as a son of God. I was thinking today, we uh, constantly, as in, as in the natural, so it is in the spirit, uh, we are learning as we go along in our lives, I pray we are, that we have to be careful of everything that we put in our body. Uh, because there are things that we eat that are going to bring life to our body. And there's other things that we eat that can bring death to our body. Uh, and I find that in, in, in the Greek uh, definitions, the fact that God is teaching us, if we behave this way, then life is in us. If we be behave this other way, death is in us. Uh, if we uh, react to things in a way that is after the nature of Christ, then the life of Christ is in us. If we react to things the way out of the nature of Adam, the death of Adam is in us. So again, it's, it's, it's a, a, a lesson for us how to be sons of God and how to be overcomers, not just in the saying of it, in the actual overcoming of it. Hallelujah. So uh, I'm glad that we go beyond the word uh, into the very walk of it. Praise his holy name. Um, I just, I, I've got the screen set for uh, the 18th uh, verse. We're in um, Hebrews, the 13th uh, chapter. And uh, again, I love the, the language of this verse. Be continuously thinking, speaking, and acting. That's what Paul's wanting us to know. And uh, it's, it's starting to come across on me <laughs> after a, about a, a million times <laughs> of reading this. It's starting to break through the thick skull of my head. Be continuously thinking, speaking, and acting toward having things go well. Oh my, what a lesson for us to be able to start living the optimum life in Christ. Christ has a life to give to us. He wants us to have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Are we doing that? Do you feel that joy unspeakable and full of glory? Not all the time, right? Sometimes life gets to you and sometimes you're under the gun and you feel the pressures of kids and of uh, your spouses and of your employer and all, or your business and all of that uh, cheats us out of being able to walk in joy unspeakable and full of glory. But this is our goal. This is where we are heading to. This We will not be satisfied until we do that, until we walk in the fullness of the joy of the Lord. Glory to God. Uh, I imagine we'll be getting on people's nerves when we do that quite a bit because uh, when you're in the mully grubs and when you're depressed and down, uh, you want others around you to be depressed and down <laughs> and you try your best to get them down there with you. But anybody that is joyful and full of glory and not coming down to that level gets on your nerves. And uh, but also it will rise those 
of people up out of that place of hell. Bring them up out of the place of, that they have made their bed in hell and will bring them up out of that place and set their feet on solid ground. Amen. Uh, but that's our goal. That is where why we are encouraging one another tonight. That's why I'm doing the reading room. That's why we, we minister when, whenever the Lord gives us the opportunity to minister. Because we have to encourage one another. We have to sing songs unto one another. Didn't the scripture say that? To encourage one another and to sing songs to each other and to uh, uh, uplift one another. And, and if we do that, eventually we start becoming, this starts becoming a normal place for us, not an unnormal place. Right now, our more normal place is just the fleshly life, just the fleshly existence. It's what we've been doing for most of our life. But as we start to continually and constantly uh, think, speak, and act toward having things go well concerning us, then that starts to become our norm, our normal. That starts becoming something that we expect and not get surprised by. We, we, we come to expect to be able to walk in the ways of the Lord and in the ways of the kingdom. Amen. And it's not something that, it's like the people that were praying for rain and they all went outside and they're all praying to God to, for rain. And this one uh, uh, elderly lady, she was the only one that brought an umbrella. <laughs> she was expecting rain. Amen. And, uh, and, and pretty soon, if you keep walking in the Christ life, then pretty soon that's normal for you. When you're not walking in that, that's where it really gets your attention. You think, hey, wait a minute. Uh, this isn't normal for me not to have the joy and the peace of God in me. Hallelujah. I've got to get back in the way pointed out here because I have been walking in that way. Amen. So that's what I hear uh, Paul saying, be continuously thinking speaking and acting toward having things go well. Another rendering is projecting goodness and ease, praying concerning us. For we have been persuaded that we have a beautiful consciousness. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to print that out and um, frame it and put it on my desk. Because I need to read this every day. For we have been persuaded that we have a beautiful consciousness. I, 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 I almost giggle every time I read that, and I have a grin on my face. A fine and ideal share in knowledge. Another range says a sound and noble conscience. Don't we all want that? Amen. Well, guess who can give it to us? Jesus. Praise the Lord. There's no reason why we can't come into that. There's no reason why we cannot have that kind of an expectation in us. Setting our will. Setting our will. When you set your will towards something, it means you have a determination toward it. You, uh, David said, I have fixed my heart, O oh God. I have fixed my heart. And, and, and his heart, he was saying, was in a fixation upon God for him to walk in the blessings of God, in the will of God. And, and I have had my heart fixed at times where I knew that I, I woke up that morning and I felt a fixed uh, a thing in me to where I was set for something in God. And I believe that we are set 
for something in God right now. A day like we have never seen before that's never been seen by any other generation. A day of an appearing and of a coming of the Lord that is going to far outshine any other appearing <coughs> of the Lord unto former generations. This is that seventh trump. This is a, a corporate trump. It's not only the seventh trump, it's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh trump. Just as the third day uh, is not just a third day of its own, it is first day, second day, third day, all in one. So this trump, this last trump, uh, that is, is a trump of fullness, is a trump of completeness. Hallelujah. It has all the other trumps rolled up within it. And the crescendo of all seven trumps will fill all of the earth, glory to God. And every man will hear the sound of that, of, of that corporate trump, of the seventh trump. Uh, the sound of, of the uh, word, the living word, Jesus, has gone into all of the earth right now. But only a few have ears to hear it. But God is going to open up the ears of every man to hear this last trump. Well, guess what we have to do? Because we are the trump that God's going to use. It's not going to be an angelic band out here in the sky, blowing golden trumpets. It's going to be a people who are the trump of the Lord. Hallelujah. Guess what we have to do? We have to have that certain sound. We have to be able to hit the mark of the sound of the Lord Jesus Christ and of the vibration of his breath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There can be no off notes. There can be none, uh, none of the fact that uh, we're not tuned to the Lord. It has to be a oneness. Amen. And this is what I believe that Christ in these scriptures are telling us. Start paying attention to those things that are least preached about in the kingdom ranks. In the kingdom ranks, you're going to hear more about Melchizedek, king priest, you're going to hear more uh, about uh, uh, the uh, New Jerusalem, uh, the Ark of the Covenant. You're going to be hearing about all of these mysterious things that people love to preach about. But in the true working out of the kingdom of God in the hearts of men, it, are, it is these things that have not been talked about or preached about very often because people tend to label them old order or elementary. But I'm telling you, Jesus did not sound like he looked down on anything elementary uh, in, when he was on the earth. Uh, in fact, he got down to very basic things uh, when he got out a pail of water and washed the feet of his disciples. Can't get any, any elementary than that. Uh, and he'd let them know, if you do not allow me to wash your feet, you have no part in me. And he said, the, the, the greatest amongst you will be the least. He'll be the servant of all. Elementary, right? No. That's, that's kingdom stuff. That is going beyond... Uh, just feelings and just a, a sermon or a message that sounds great. Now it's getting down into shoe leather. Amen. Amen. And so uh, continue to read. It says, setting our will to behave ourselves beautifully. Now I have, I have uh, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, I've been in the kingdom message for... Uh, you know, four, five decades now. 
And I don't know if I have met very many, if any, sons of God that have fulfilled just this one verse. Uh, setting our will to behave ourselves beautifully, in a good way, ideally, soundly, honorably, in all things and among all people. Paul has preached some very deep and mysterious things in these former chapters. He's opened up Mount Zion to us. He has uh, told us all about Melchizedek. He has uh, shown us uh, the way into Jesus and has warned us of the shaking of earth and heaven together, not just earth, but now I will shake heaven and earth together until there can only be that which can remain remaining. But now he is getting to a place now where he is telling us live the life such as befits the children of God. Live that life. Hallelujah. And he's the same one in another book that says that we are living epistles written by the, uh, by the Spirit of God, uh, a testimony unto all people that, we, that read our book. Uh, so, so Paul is really setting some things within us that is going to lead us on into the great things. Hallelujah. 19th verse says, Yet... I am more exceedingly calling you alongside, urging and encouraging you to do this or perform this to the end that I can or would more quickly be restored or returned to you. Now may the God who is peace, another rendering, who is the origin of and has the character and qualities of harmony, shalom. The one at one point leading our Lord, our master, our owner, Jesus, the shepherd of the sheep, the great one, back up again out of the midst of dead folks. God having raised his son Jesus up out of the tomb, Hallelujah. Out of the midst of dead folks, may he at once render you folks thoroughly equipped, fitted, adapted in the midst of all good and in every virtue, immersed in and in union with the blood of a thorough arrangement. This is heavy duty language, at once render you folks thoroughly equipped. Other verses that you'll read throughout the New Testament will use other phrases to speak of a fullness of power of exousia, dunamis and exousia in the Greek, dynamite, dunamis, power, exousia, authority, authority, and power. All of those verses speak it in another way. But as I read this, I'm telling you, this is one of the most powerful verses you'll read in the New Testament. May he at once render you folks thoroughly equipped, fitted, adapted, in the midst of all good and in every virtue, immersed in and in union with the blood or the life of a thorough arrangement or a covenant, a deposit which moves throughout in every direction, 
a placing through the midst. Another rendering, a will and a testament. That is the blood of a thorough arrangement. Arrangement meaning covenant or agreement by blood. Amen. So we are being thoroughly equipped right now. And this equipping doesn't come from the outside on us. This is not something that comes upon us, this equipping. This is an equipping that comes from within. It's 2 Corinthians 5, the, uh, where it, 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 it says that for this that we know, we know this, that if this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, there is another tabernacle that remains eternal in the heavens. Then goes on to say that we do not groan to be naked or unclothed with this outer house, but that the house within might come up and swallow this outer house within itself. So that's the equipping. That is where it comes from. It isn't somebody coming and laying hands on us. It isn't the guest speaker coming to your church and all of a sudden having a word that you're just going to take on the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a daily a walk of beauty and of harmony and an and equipping that, that day by day, moment by moment, like, a, a, like an invading army that begins on the shore of the land it's invading, it invades, it makes, uh, gains ground on the beachfront, and it holds, and it builds fortifications, and then it advances a little more, and then it holds. And then it builds fortifications. This is the way our walk in the Lord is. He is an invading king. He is a king that is going to overthrow, overthrow all the kingdoms of our land. All everything that has exalted itself against the Lord Jesus is going to be overcome by the Lamb of God and by his saints. Hallelujah. There is an overcoming taking place in us when it's a, it's a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. Uh, again, I liken this kind of a putting on uh, to the way the earth takes on light, sunlight. Uh, it doesn't start where all of a sudden the earth goes, boom, over to the sun, does it? The earth is turning toward the sun and nighttime and darkness slowly but surely starts giving way because the more the earth turns toward the light of the sun, the more the darkness starts to flee. I used to travel at night purposely because I loved uh, uh, that time of traveling because the Lord would speak to my heart and that's where I heard from the Lord a lot and uh, less traffic on the road. But also what I loved about it was as I got near to the morning, I would, uh, and, and uh, we lived out west uh, in Arizona and if I was headed home, it almost always worked out to where uh, I would start to uh, be in the midst of the mountains when I, uh, daylight started to break. And I enjoyed looking out and trying to figure out what was out there, but of course it was dark. And as every moment went by, things started to appear out of that darkness. And I'm, I was like that guy, that, uh, that man that was healed of his uh, blindness. And he said, I see men as trees. And uh, he couldn't see them as men yet. They were more like trees than men. But he started to see, and eventually he saw them as men. 
That's the way the morning was. Pretty soon, I didn't have to guess anymore. I knew what was there. And as the morning went on to total light, then I could see explicitly everything I was guessing at. I knew then immediately. That's a mountain, that's, that's cactus, uh, uh, that's a, a, a Navajo uh, hut, uh, that is uh, a town up ahead. All of that became known then. And we are turning toward the Lord. And right now, you know what? We're doing a lot of guessing. It's expected. It's expected that we speculate of what we have come to know. Are we saying the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Not yet. We're not afraid to speculate, though. We're not afraid to read scriptures like we're doing here and say, you know what I hear out of this is thus and thus. Uh, if we only wait until we saw everything perfectly, then we would never grow into it. We would, we, we would never have the opportunity to walk into it. So we spe speak the light as we see the light. And, and it's, it's, it's through a glass darkly. But that glass is clearing up. Hallelujah. And now more and more uh, knowledge is being given to us concerning the Lord than at any other time in the annals of, of the ages. Christ is revealing himself to us as he is. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? Praise the Lord. So at once may he render you folks thoroughly equipped, fitted, and adapted in the midst of all good and in every virtue immersed in and in union with the blood of a thorough arrangement or a covenant pertaining to and having the qualities of the age. Another rendering says an Ionian through the ages settlement. There is a, an arrangement for this age that supersedes other ages. What we are seeing now in God in this age of the third day from Jesus Christ is superseding Pentecost or Passover. Its ministry is superseding Pentecost or Passover because it is the age of the fullness. Hallelujah. It's the age where our body, our, our soul, and our spirit are all partaking of the salvation of Jesus Christ. It's the age where our whole man is being brought to life. Glory to God. The very cells of our body are starting to hear the word of the Lord. I firmly believe that. I believe that the word of the Lord is going into us continually. If we will walk continually in a beautiful conscience, if we will walk continually in a, a, an alertness and an awakeness unto it, hallelujah, then the cells of our bodies are going to hear the word of the Lord. We are a walking, living feast of tabernacles. Our body is a living, walking feast of tabernacles called cells, a hundred trillion cells tabernacling with God. Can you imagine it? Hallelujah. God coming from the recesses and the, in, uh, the indwelling parts of our being, and he is starting to work his way out in this invasion, in this uh, uh, bringing down of all strongholds. He is working his way out, out through our mind, out through our heart, and eventually our body, hallelujah, will be changed and this mortal put on immortality, hallelujah. 
So that is a part of our message is the fact that we are being, as this scripture says, immersed in, baptized into Christ. Glory. Hallelujah. Having that which is within us come out upon us and baptizing us, immersing us into it. Glory to God until it is all that is seen. Glory. Until it is us in him and him in us and over us and through us. Glory to God. Abiding in the vine is another way of putting what we're saying here. Uh, so, that, uh, so that we start to live in the vine. And the vine is our life. Glory to God. Uh, the, the, uh, there's all kinds of ways that the scripture says this full salvation. Uh, and, uh, and that to me is something that Paul is wanting us to know that we know, to, to embed it within us yes. uh, so that we can have the qualities of the age in order to at once do, produce, perform his will. Now that's the, uh, at least the second time that we have read those two words that I think are significant. At once, do his will. Um, trying to find the other at once. Uh, at the top of the verse, uh, at once, Render you folks thoroughly equipped at once. Glory to God. So uh, uh, this is something that I think that we need to uh, come into a, 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 uh, an agreement with, with what God is doing in order to at once do his will, the effect of his intent and purpose, his will, the result of his design and pleasure. Progressively creating, doing, forming, producing within you folks and in union with you people. Other uh, manuscripts says, in us, all of us, the well-pleasing and satisfying result in his presence and sight through Jesus Christ, in whom and for whom and by whom and to whom is the glory, the reputation, and the manifestation which calls forth praise on into the ages of the ages. It is so. Count on it. <laughs> I love Paul. Don't you love Paul? It is so. Count on it. Amen. Paul was no, no um, uh, what's the word for it? Millie, uh, wishy wash uh, when he ministered. Mealy, uh, yeah. Uh, he didn't mince his words. That's right. He knew what he knew. And he's portraying that to everyone he's writing to. He's wanting us to know. And this is actually his sign off. This is actually the closing of his book to the Hebrews. And he is signing it off on this way. Where uh, uh, I'm going to read this all again, all through without stopping. At once, render you folks thoroughly equipped in the midst of all good and in every virtue, immersed in and in union with the blood of a thorough arrangement pertaining to and having the qualities of the age. That's a definite article, the age, not just an age, the age in order to at once do his will. Progressively 
creating within you folks and in union with you people the well-pleasing and satisfying result in his presence and sight through Jesus Christ, in whom is the glory on into the ages of the ages. It is so. Count on it. Amen. <laughs> glory to God. And I'm with Paul. I, I, I feel the assurity of that, don't you? I get a witness in my spirit that this is not maybe. This is, there's no if in this, is there? Have you heard an if in here? That if you will do this and if you will do that, that's not here. It's telling us exactly what Christ has done and what he will do in you and what he's doing right now. Glory to God. And I love the word that is saying progressively, progressively creating within you folks and in union with you people. So that is uh, another part of how our message is uh, so different from the new age and from any other religion out here. We incorporate in the whole world. Uh, we preach the whole word from cover to cover. Uh, I don't have to pick out things out of the Bible and feel comfortable about it in order to preach the message that God has given to us. It is from, gen, uh, from uh, Genesis all the way into Revelation. And we minister it from gen Genesis 1-1 all the way through the end of Revelation. And, and Christ is through it all. The plan of God is through it all. I don't know any other people that, that, that thoroughly does that except those who are ministering the real, the uh, uh, accurate kingdom truth. Uh, there's a lot of kingdom sounding truth out here, but those who preach the whole truth of the kingdom message this is something that is unique to that, where Jesus is in the beginning and Jesus is in the end, and he's all in between. Hallelujah. Yes. Aren't you glad it goes on into the ages of the ages? Yes. If we don't enter into immortality, and that's all up to God, isn't it? Yes. But if we don't, I have safety in me. I feel safe in putting all of my trust in the plan of God, knowing that if I have to go by, and hey, there's been many, many, many better men than, than myself that have not made it into immortality. But if I should go by the way of all flesh, uh, then I look forward to the ages of the ages. Amen. I look forward to the fact that the grave is not the end of Bob Taranjo. Amen. <laughs> Neither is it, is it the end of you. Amen. Uh, we go on into Christ. And we take another position, don't we? We take another uh, way of ministering as uh, witnesses, a cloud of witnesses. We become messengers of God. Uh, who knows what all, again, speculation, but who knows what all we will be doing after this life. Uh, but it certainly doesn't end at the, at the grave. Amen. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he's doing now in our midst, he will be doing throughout all of the ages. But I like what uh, Origen, one of the greatest early church fathers, and I ministered a little bit about this on a couple of Sundays ago, I believe it was. Uh, he was talking about the fact that there is an end. Time is not eternal. Time has a beginning and an end. 
And as long as there are ages, time continues. But Christ has taken all of that into account in his plan. So from the very before time began, before time ever began, in the Father, Jesus had already made the sacrifice of himself for creation. And that involved looking out from God in through all the ages back into God. And Hebrews uh, talked about uh, the end, God all in all. But Origen, the, the greatest early church father, uh, he had a word for it, and it was apocatastasis, apocatastasis. And it meant a good end. Telos being end. There's a good and perfect end that Jesus has secured for all creation. To where by the end of all things, when all things are done and said, when there's nothing else to be done or said, Everything is in its place. And everything is as it was in Genesis and even more so. It is good. When God looked back on his days of creation, after every day it is good. But on the last day, he says, it is very good. And this telos, this end that we have at the end of the ages of the ages, it is going to be very good, complete, everything fully accomplished. And then the Son has given up the kingdom to the Father. Amen. Glory to God. And he is all in all. Amen. And there's no darkness anywhere. There's no evil anywhere. There's only light and perfection the Urim and the Thummim, lights and perfection. That is what's going to be at the very end. And if you want to speculate about what's next after all that, go ahead. I'm not. <laughs> I have enough problem with right now. <laughs> but I love the phrasing that you find in the Greek. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yet I'm calling you alongside to aid and encourage. Now I am performing as a paraclete for you, brothers. A paraclete, what does that mean? It means an advocate. Uh, when I was applying for, uh, because of my neck problems that I had, my doctor told me you have to apply for Social Security. And... Uh, so I got a, I was told you have to have a lawyer. So I got a lawyer and he was my advocate, my paraclete. Uh, he advocated for me. He, uh, he took my part against the government. And so, uh, as it comes to find out, I didn't even have to have them. But Jesus is our paraclete. And now, Paul, in the Greek, you don't read that in the, in the King James, but Paul himself is saying, uh, now I am performing as a paraclete for you, brothers, fellow believers, my family, progressively uphold the word of the encouraging calling alongside for aid and exhortation. Again, calling alongside, that is intimacy. In the Old Testament, they put their hand under the hip when taking a vow or getting a word 
from their elder. It was coming along the side was a an intimacy, a kinsmanship. And so Paul is saying, as Jesus has, progressively uphold the word of the encouraging calling alongside for aid and exhortation or the message which pertains to and has its origin in the paraclete. Now, I want to take a few moments with this because we need to be paracletes for each other. That is really what Paul is saying here. He says, I'm performing as a paraclete for you. Now, uh, uphold the word of the message which pertains to and has its origin in the paraclete. That's with a capital P. So that's Jesus. For I also send it to you through a brief letter. 23rd verse, know or take note and personally and be personally aware that our brother Timothy has been released with whom, if he may more quickly be going or coming, I will see you. Greet and embrace all the folks taking the lead among you and all the set apart folks, the holy ones, the saints, those from Italy or the Italians here are constantly embracing and greeting you folks. Another rendering says, those here are now sending you greetings from Italy. Grace and joyous favor are with all of you. And, and I believe that's such a fitting ending, that very last verse. Grace and joyous favor are with all of you. Glory to God. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Now, this book was written uh, around uh, 67 AD, after Christ, and based on the critical analysis of John A.T. Robinson is where Jonathan gets that date at. Uh, but this has been such a pleasure bringing this to you, and I, I believe I'm getting more than what anybody else could possibly get from doing this. It has been ministering to the messenger uh, as much as it has anyone else uh, because uh, it has meant so much to me and, and the wording of the Greek has changed my direction in God. When you minister for 55 years, uh, to say that something has changed your direction, your ministry, it's quite a statement. Uh, because we can get set in our ways and, and we can refuse to move out of those ways into anything new or anything different. But through the experience that I had from Christ when uh, I was laid up in bed for uh, a couple of weeks, I believe, and the Lord gave me a reset in my being. And it was in the middle of a great upheaval in my life. But he spoke to me, a reset had taken place. And, and this has meant so much to me to have confirmation from reading the Greek. It is reconfirming in me that we can either get all carried away by the ego of this message of the kingdom, uh, we can get carried away with its uh, affluent language of Melchizedek, of uh, sons of God, of kingdom, of priest king, of uh, um, uh, ministers of the sanctuary, in going behind the veil. We can get all caught up into all of that or we can tend to the basics. 
that are not really basics at all. It is the foundation upon which all other uh, acts of God are built upon. I've often said that about reconciliation, is that reconciliation sounds mysterious, sounds like an end time message, doesn't it? Where all of a sudden God's come upon us with this message of reconciliation. That's not true at all. Reconciliation has been a part, a, a truth, all the way th from Jesus, all through the church and all the way up till now. Um, but it's a foundation. It's John uh, 3.16. Reconciliation is John 3.16. Uh, it's upon which everything else is built. And Jesus wants to build upon us. He wants to build up a man, a new man. And that man is going to be established and, and set upon the foundation of love, of perfectness, of being able to be uh, in the image and the likeness of of God, but it but the kingdom is run on and through love, God's love. So let us learn that now, and and uh, that verse that I was talking about with immortality in First Corinthians, uh, the fifteenth chapter. There's two parts to that. This corruptible shall put on. In, must put on incorruption, this mortal put on immortality. Without the first part, there is no second part. Amen. Without a people that's, that are living sacrifices to allow the incorruptible nature of Jesus Christ to be worked out of them, out of them, through them, and out of them, Without that, there will be none of the other things that God has spoken to us about because love is the foundation. And that is where sons of God are made at, is in the innermost parts of your being. Hallelujah. That's where you come into your sonship, who you are. Praise the Lord. So uh, this has been wonderful, and I hope you have enjoyed it uh, in the book of Hebrews, as much as I have, uh, I uh, almost can guarantee we're going to love Ephesians, reading it in the Greek. Amen. So uh, next Friday, this, this Friday coming up, uh, we'll start the book of Ephesians and uh, see what God has for us there. Amen. Father, I thank you for blessing us, being with us, giving us the strength, O oh God, yes. to be able to teach your word to be able to share these most precious truths of you, Lord. Yes. And we don't take it lightly, O oh God. All of these wonderful phrases that the Greek has uh, had written within it through the very uh, apostles themselves. And I thank you, Lord, uh, that we can uh, learn them now yes. at this time and this day. I ask you to bless the ears of the hearers. I ask you, Lord, that the word will have gone into them and that it will indeed bring forth the kingdom of God, the power and the majesty and the glory of your kingdom, Lord Jesus. So Lord, just strengthen us today. Give us your wisdom and your knowledge in our life. May we live every day with a continual praise within us. Oh God, may there be constant joy and beauty within us, O oh Lord, as we live this Christ's life that you have given to us to live. We thank you, Lord, and we be sure to give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Amen and amen. All right. God bless everybody. We love you with all of our heart. We thank God for you. You are our family. Amen. And we thank you so much for being a part of our lives. We'll see you Friday night at 6 Central Time. Be sure to tune in tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Central Time 
for Thursday night with Bobby Jean. Amen. You will be blessed. God bless.